I'll say this about Netflix, they sure do hire some damn fine actors. Hey guys, I'm Rebecca from Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Netflix shows with the best performances. Things are gonna get better for you. <laughs> Have they gotten better for you? Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. So that means we'll be looking at Netflix originals with universally great performances. However, we will only be discussing live action performances, so no voice acting, no matter how much I love Big Mouth. Let's get to the list. Number 10, Lady Dynamite. Lady Dynamite has seemingly fallen by the wayside of Netflix originals. It's rarely talked about online, and when the best Netflix shows are mentioned, Lady Dynamite is usually and mysteriously absent. And we have no idea why, because it's an absolutely hilarious show. I have a show? I'm a 45-year-old woman who's clearly sun damaged. Lady Dynamite is a surreal comedy loosely based on the life of comedian Maria Bamford, and her performance is both hilarious and honest. She walks a delicate tightrope between outrageous zaniness and troubled sincerity when it comes to her mental illness, and she's surrounded by game guest stars. It's a shame this was cancelled after two seasons, because it's filled with talented individuals who deserve more attention and respect. So Larissa says that you think you're really funny and you have a lot of mental illness. Wow, that's how she described me. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Number 9. Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt is another show that walks a delicate line between absurdist humor and painful realities, although it never quite reaches the darker depths of Lady Dynamite. I'm a mole woman. That's messed up. That said, it's arguably the funnier series, as its actors are more than game to inhabit these kooky characters. Standouts include Titus Burgess as the flamboyant Titus Andromedon and Jane Krakowski as the arrogant Jacqueline. But it's Ellie Kemper's star-making performance as Kimmy that steals the show. Then go home and find something special to wear for tonight. It's special like that t-shirt I got at the mall opening? They shot it out of a cannon. She nails the typical fish-out-of-water character, and her unique, adorable charm is on full display through her persistent goodwill and optimism. You gotta respect these actors for going to such ridiculous lengths to get a laugh. That's what you told. I'm so sorry. Take all the time you need. Number eight, Glow. I just want to say thank you so much for bringing me in for this. There are not roles like this for women right now. It's really, ooh, <laughs> it's really great. We all wondered what Alison Brie was going to do after Community. We finally got our answer. Glow is a great show about the gorgeous ladies of wrestling, a female wrestling promotion that consisted of actresses and models hoping to make it big. The series contains a host of breakout stars and known actors, including the aforementioned Alison Brie and podcast host Mark Marin, who is surprisingly great as GLOW's director, Sam Sylvia. I know you're some big famous giant, but you're an asshole and you wear oversized diapers for a living. Oh, oh God damn it, Jesus. The show at once embraces the campy female archetypes of GLOW, while at the same time showing the realistic and three-dimensional women behind the roles. And the cast pulls it all off with pathos and humor alike. How do you spell freedom? You! Number seven, Grace and Frankie. Like Lady Dynamite, Grace and Frankie has somewhat fallen by the wayside in terms of popularity. I am still being treated the way I was for 40 years, and I am not going to settle for it anymore. Neither am I. I've got a belly full of rage and martini. You never really hear about it, but that's probably because it's a little outside of Netflix's core demographic. That said, it's still a great comedy featuring all-stars Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin as women who discover that their respective husbands are in love with each other. I'll give you a no, actually, I didn't oh, want to see it. I, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> Lily Tomlin is especially good, having been nominated for three Emmys, two SAGs, and a Golden Globe. The concept and jokes are a little cliche, but Tomlin and Fonda's grounded, hilarious performances elevate the material into something better than it has any right to be. <laughs> People like this. Number six, Mind Hunter. Movies and shows about serial killers walk a tricky line. Too melodramatic, and you risk losing the necessary realism. If an actor is too inexperienced or campy, then you lose the necessary creepiness. All this is to say that Mind Hunter perfectly nailed the aspect of serial killers that make them so compelling to so many people. What can I say? Prisons are like knitting circles. Word gets around. <laughs> 
while some people complained about the acting of leads Jonathan Groff and Hannah Gross, the serial killers were praised, particularly Happy Anderson as Jerry Brudos and Cameron Britton as Edmund Kemper. I love that. What's my psychology? They were all scary without being excessive, and humane enough that we felt fascinated by their stories. Number 5. Master of None You sure you don't want to go for a nice dinner? No, you don't need to take us out for any fancy dinner. Just call us once a week. That would be good. Netflix certainly knows how to capture a demographic. Master of None is a perfect show for confused millennials growing up in the 2010s. It speaks to a generation through a host of realistic performances led by Aziz Ansari, whose real-life dating exploits came to the fore in early 2018 and brought a new perspective to the series and its themes. He's not Master of None's only standout either. Lena Waithe's performance as Denise has also earned considerable praise. Ma, I'm gay. It also hosts a ton of amazing guest actors, including Angela Bassett, Claire Danes, and Shaukath Ansari, the latter being Aziz's hilarious real-life father. Now Dr. Ramasamy probably wandering around Penn Station eating pretzels. Okay, you don't know that he's eating pretzels. Also, that's an adorable worst-case scenario for someone lost alone in New York. We see ourselves in these actors, and it hurts just as much as it comforts. Number 4. Stranger Things Shit! Shit! Friends, don't lie! Child acting has had a real rocky history in Hollywood. Sometimes it's great, like in most of Spielberg's work. Other times, well, it just sucks. Fortunately, the child actors of Stranger Things are excellent, infusing their characters with humanity and heart while still being as entertaining as ever. Also, props to Noah Schnapp. That kid killed it in season two. I felt it everywhere. Everywhere. I still feel it. Of course, the adults are no slouches either. Winona Ryder gives her best performance in years, and breakout star David Harbour made Chief Hopper a fan favorite through his character's sadness and maturity. I'm just sorry about everything. The cast certainly deserved that Screen Actors Guild Award, and then some. Number 3. House of Cards The one that started it all, House of Cards proved that Netflix could battle with the big boys. While its later seasons did not receive as universal acclaim as its earlier ones, the show is still a compelling political drama, with a barrage of big names filling out the cast list and offering up powerhouse performances. Kevin Spacey's fantastically creepy and psychopathic Frank Underwood was front and center for its first five seasons, supported beautifully by his partner in politics, Claire, played to icy perfection by Robin Wright. I know what I'm doing, Claire. I've been president before. So have I. While the 2017 sexual misconduct allegations against Spacey ended his time on the show, Wright, Michael Kelly, and the rest of the revolving supporting cast were more than capable of keeping the show afloat without him. I can be a friend to you, you know. It doesn't have to be like this. I don't have any friends. Number two, Orange is the New Black. I take full responsibility, and I may be suffering from short-term memory loss, and I don't know why, so can you please just cut me some slack? Following House of Cards was Orange is the New Black, and while the former focuses on a particular set of characters, the latter allows its entire ensemble to shine. And they all do respectable jobs of bringing their complex characters to life. Many of its actors were unknowns at the time of release, who have since blown up due to their obvious talents, including Danielle Brooks, Samira Wiley, and breakout star Uzo Aduba, who's won a Critics' Choice, two Emmys, and two SAGs. The cast has won three SAG Awards for Best Ensemble, and it's not hard to see why. It's too much, and, and you're all lying, 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 and you lie too much! Too much to They're all hilarious, they're all poignant, and they're all amazing. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I wish you cared as much about you and me as you do that stuff. That is not fair. You lost your parents? Welcome to the goddamn club. I lost mine in some random accident. Do you see me trying to kill every shitty driver? No! Any of us run, we're dead, so forget it. Hey, Marty, look around. This place is death. Number one, The Crown. 
Netflix went all out for the crown. The settings and costumes for one episode alone probably cost more than you'll ever make, and it secured some incredibly talented actors. While some people may scoff at the idea of another pretentious period piece, The Crown is worth watching for the sheer power of its acting. Do this, don't do that. Wear this, don't wear that. Say this, don't say that. Can you imagine anything more humiliating? Yes. As a matter of fact, I can. These people completely disappear into their roles and become notable historic figures, including Claire Foy as Queen Elizabeth II and particularly John Lithgow as Winston Churchill, who arguably makes a better Winston Churchill than Winston Churchill. God, save the Queen. The Crown is less a period piece than it is an authentic look into the reign of Queen Elizabeth. The acting is just that convincing. Are you my wife or my queen? I'm both. I want to be married to my wife. I am both, and a strong man will be able to kneel to both. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.